Hello, my name is Jasmine Strange, and my topic is over respiratory failure with hypoxia related to pulmonary embolism. What is respiratory failure? Respiratory failure with hypoxia occurs when the respiratory system fails and adequately oxygenate fails to adequately oxygenate the blood or remove carbon dioxide leading to low oxygen levels in the body. This can be caused by various conditions such as pneumonia, COPD, asthma exacerbation, pulmonary embolism, and ARDS, in which my um, patient had a pulmonary embolism. Um, that's the, that was the reason for the respiratory failure. Treatment simply involves oxygen therapy addressing uh, and it also should address the underlying cause which was the pulmonary embolism in in severe cases mechanical ventilation may be necessary to support breathing the reason i chose this particular patient was she was um uh, scheduled to get her uh trach out uh the following day uh, the patient was scheduled to be transferred to the Stallworth inpatient for rehabilitation facility to assist with her mobility and strength. The 74-year-old went through a lot throughout her hospital stay. Uh, this is a summary of my patient's uh, hospital stay. Uh, December 13, 2023, she was admitted to the uh, Vanderbilt for liposopic hepatic cysts. Uh, on a December 14, 2023, she had uh, got a hepatic cyst which was removed. Um, December 21st, 2024, no, December 21st, 2023, post op course was complicated by pulmonary embolism, where she had a pulmonary embolism, which complicated everything resulting into her to have uh restored failure. Uh February 7, 2024, hypoxemic, she got hypoxemic restore failure again. Um the right the uh CXR the C excuse me the checks X ray um stated that she had a right pleural effusion and a, uh she also had a right lung atelectasis in which she was uh, intubated for. February 19, 2024, she had a failed extubation um, in which she had to get trait for it. February 27, she was admitted to a uh, select specialty hospital. March 4th, she had a right neurosynthesis, which was a, a thousand milliliters of fluid was removed. Uh, March 7th, the, she had a trach train used to Vivana March 8th. She had a CXR and then it was uh it showed that it was, there was an elevation of right human di uh, right human diaphragm. Uh, and there was a small right pleural effusion without neurothorax. Uh March 8th, she had clear liquid diet started. March 11th, a full liquid diet. Um March um 12, she started physical therapy and uh, occupational therapy. March 17, she was off the vent, finally. Uh, March 19, a uh, trait change to six, shyly cuffless, and she was already uh, decanulation, pathway initiated, soft bite size diet. Um, and then there was also, she was on vapor therm, started vapor therm, which was 30 liters. Uh, FIO2 was 30%. Uh, March 28th, uh, she was anticipated to be discharged to Stallworth um, Rehab Center to help with her mobility. Um, and her family also wanted her to go to um, Stallworth um, for her uh, help, to get her help, more help. My patient uh, medical history includes um, breast cancer, thyroid lobectomy, that's the removal of the thyroid. Uh, she also had hypertension.
She also had her in um, malnutrition, and she also had a thyroid nodule, which was uh, why she needed the thyroid lobectomy. Uh, and then her surgeries included uh, abdominal hysterectomy, a total abdominal hysterectomy. She also had cataract surgery. And like I said, she had a thyroid uh, removal. My patient data, which was not included, was the ABG. There wasn't an ABG in her chart. Um, I also had my preception check and see what the ABG done. And she said it might have been an ABG done at the previous hospital, but not select. Um, the complete blood count includes uh, red blood cells was 3.29, white blood cells was 9.3, America 31.6, platelets 253. The blood chemistry, uh, sodium 134, uh, potassium uh, 4.4, chloride 94, CO2 25, her pulse was 95, her blood pressure was 90 or 60, respiratory rate was 16, the temp was 36.4. Right here is an example of a chest x-ray uh, done on a patient. Um, and you can see where um, there's an elevated right hemodiagram with poor effusion without a new thoric. Um, and the patient, my patient also had atelectasis. You can see where one side is higher than the other. And um, Uh, related information, uh, restoral failure can occur due to various reasons, one of which is pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism is a serious condition where a blood clot travels to the lungs and blocks blood flow. The blockage can lead to decreased oxygen levels in the blood, causing hypoxia and potentially restoral failure if severe. Treatment for restoral failure uh, includes supplement oxygen, Looking at ventilation, addressing the underlying cause, which was pulmonary embolism, and preventing complications. Prognosis for pulmonary embolism depends on several factors, including uh, the size of the clot, underlying medical uh, conditions, overall health of the individual. Um, so, like, if the um, individual is already like in in a bad shape, have bad health. Uh, history of bad health is probably hit harder for that patient. Overall, with early intervention, patients can recover with little complication. Uh, treatment includes treatment for pulmonary embolism typically involves anticoagulant medi uh, medication to prevent further clotting, oxygen therapy to improve oxygenation, and in some cases, intervention like thrombotic therapy. Uh, signs and symptoms include shoulder breath, chest pain, coughing up blood, risk factors is uh, cancer, immobility surgery, deep brain thrombosis. Um, the team had a conference and the doctor expected the patient to um, have an ability to tolerate cuff deflation without risk of gross aspiration of secretions. And he also noted that her um, PIP should be uh, under uh, 30. Her PIP should be below 6. Her FI2 should be below 50%. And then he also stated that no cuff leak in order to be placed on tweaking valves. Um, the vent trach documentation uh, and before she was uh, placed on Vavitherm and when uh, he also stated that uh, um, the mode should be AC, PC, assist control, pressure control. The FO2, the FO2 should uh, was 35 percent. The peak was five centimeters H2O. Uh, hour, the hour she was on the vent was 16. The vent weaning and trait collar trials were in process. Uh, Vapotherm when she was placed on the paper therm after she uh, got off the vent. Um, the paper therm should be, well, excuse me, when she was on the trial, uh, the, um, the paper therm was 30 liters and then the FL2 was 30%. Uh, 
Um, I was tolerated per day doing a trait collar trials with eight. Um, and then the oxygen delivery device was vent slash straight collar. The uh, oxygen was 98%. Okay, now it's called um, going through information gathering. Uh, the medic diagnosis was she was uh, had a hepatic cyst, hepatic cyst, and she was uh, at, when she was at Vanderbilt. Um, her pulmonary diagnosis was hypoxic, hypoxemic respiratory failure related to a pulmonary embolism. Uh, the oxygen therapy device uh, is uh, a trait collar, which uh, she was on a vapor therm. Bronchial hygiene was open suction. Sub uh, subjective information included patient uh, reported she was feeling well and, uh, and she denied short of breath. She still feels like she has extra fluid on her body, slash, and uh, especially her abdomen. She has seen uh, physical therapy. Um, observe. Uh, Objective information included uh, x-ray show bilateral x spaces disease. She's alert, awake, oriented, and comfortable in bed. She tolerated vapor during 30 liters and 30% FO2 for trick uh, collar. On the assessment uh, was she was uh, diminished. Um, GI cyst, it was soft, uh, non tender, and mildly descended. Uh, she also has an ileostomy. Uh, she follows command and math words. Uh, uh, trach is midline and in the centric. Uh, the plan is to the patient be scheduled to um, be the, uh, the king lady. Well, get her trach out on the 25th. Uh, she was weaned from being uh, February 28th. We'll be uh, headed to Star Ray for, uh, Rehab Facility in three days for a family request. And she had no restored medications. The goals uh, should include stabilize the patient, improve oxygenation, prevent further clot formation, manage symptoms, and address underlying conditions. Uh, other goals is to stabilize respiratory function, provide supplemental oxygen, which is anticoagulant, uh, well, anti anticoagulation therapy, administer heparin, and, and she also need pain management, a management of uh, pain meds, like analgesic. Uh, monitor and prevent complications. Regular assess uh, include physical exams, chest imaging, CT scan, and chest x-ray, and cardiac monitoring. Patient education. Um, the RT should educate the patient and family about pulmonary embolism, treatment plan, uh, medications, and signs and symptoms what a team can educate to. Um, psychosocial support, uh, you should offer, offer counseling, et cetera. Address uh, psycho psychological and emotional needs related to the diagnosis and treatment of pulmonary embolism and respiratory failure. And this is one of my questions. Um, it was, what is the easiest question? <laughs> I've been talking about it the whole time. What is respiratory failure? And the answer is, respiratory failure is a serious condition that makes it difficult to breathe on your own. Respiratory failure de develops when the lungs cannot get enough oxygen into the blood. We breathe oxygen from the air into our lungs, and we breathe out carbon dioxide, which is a waste, a waste gas made in the body cells. And this is a true and false question. True or false question. Uh, true or false signs and symptoms of pulmonary embolism include short of breath, chest pains, and cough. Yes, this is true.
all these are symptoms of uh, a pulmonary embolism. These are my references. Um, I included four references. Um, and thanks again, Jasmine Strange. I hope you have a blessed day. Thanks again for listening.